Hello, my name is Nikai Rimmer, and I'm going to discuss the direct comparison theorem used for improper integrals. And the question at hand is not about when the integral converges, what does it converge to? The question is just, does it converge or does it diverge? And so what we're going to do is compare the given integral to another integral that we can calculate. And by doing that, we should be able to then say something about the given integral. Now, this doesn't always work, so let me lay down the uh, criteria for which it works. Uh, we need to have a function f and a function g, and we need for them both to be continuous on the interval where x's are bigger than some x value equal to a, um, and we need the function f to be bigger than or equal to the function g. And, and one last thing, we need them all to be positive. Okay, so can't have the function going negative, and we can't have, um, uh, we must have the function f being more than the function g. So in this drawing that you have here, we have the function f in green, I don't know if you can see it, and the function g is in red. I have these color, these shading going on, where the blue shade is the area under g, now the area under F is, in addition to the area under G, it also is the yellow. So it's two different um, together. The area under G, uh, F is for sure more than the area under G. That's the point. Okay. And here's what you are to do. You're given an integral. You don't know whether it's the smaller or the bigger one. But you have to then go out and get another function and compare the one you're given to this, um, to this other function you go out and get. How do you go out and get this other function? Um, you should be seeking out in the function that you're given uh, terms that become insignificant as x goes to infinity. Also, you should be looking for uh, terms that maybe they're bounded as x goes to infinity. These are the terms that you seek out. And what you do with these is either you drop them off or you replace them. Somehow, you end up with another function by that process. Now that other function you have, you need to be able to know whether it has a convergent or divergent integral over the same interval. Okay. And so then we compare. We compare. Now, if your function's f, if your function's the larger one, we call it f. If your function's the smaller one, we call it g. We got to be able to compare them. So we can say, for all x's that are bigger than a, we are sure that f is the bigger one and g is the smaller one. Okay. So as you drop off terms, be aware of how you're dropping them off. Are they positive? Are they negative? Are they in the numerator? Are they in the denominator? All these things will help you figure out the inequality direction. Okay. So let's say that through this process, you've gone out and you've gotten the larger function, f of x. And you actually are able to calculate the integral and know that it is a convergent integral. Then the direct comparison theorem says that g then, who is the given integral, that integral is also convergent. In a nutshell, is this. If the area under f is equal to some constant, that's what it means to be convergent, then the area under g is bounded by that. It has to be less than that. It can then go off to infinity. It must also be convergent. Although we have no idea what it's convergent to. That's okay. And so if the given function is smaller than a function with finite area, then the given function must also have finite area. Okay. All right, great. Now let's flip it. Let's say that through that process, you went out and got a function that's smaller and you're able to integrate that function. You know exactly what that function does. And let's say that function diverges. The area is infinite. Okay. If you have an integral that you went out and got through that process that is divergent, then the one that was given is the bigger one. And then that one has no choice but to also be divergent. And so what we're saying is that if the given function is larger than a function that has infinite area, then the given function will also have infinite area. And that's the direct comparison theorem. What's coming next is we're going to have two examples. I'm going to go through them with you. But then after that is another video I want you to watch where 
the inequality will go the wrong way and then you'll have to uh, perform another theorem. So um, we need F to be the bigger one and F to converge to say that G converges or we need G to be the smaller one and G to diverge to say that F also diverges. So we have one of each type here in this example, in these two examples. Uh, first up, we have X over X cubed plus one. Okay, and we're not interested in the actual value. We just want to know, does it converge or diverge? So looking at this, we go through the process of trying to figure out what to add or what to, what to drop or what to um, bound. And so as X gets large, the plus one won't matter at all. Okay, so we can drop that term off. By dropping that off, we'll have something that is bigger. Why is the thing that we have bigger? Well, the one that we're given has the plus one. Everything else is exactly matching. Bigger denominator leaves you to be a smaller fraction. So the one that we're given is smaller. The one that we got by dropping off is bigger. It simplifies to be one over x squared. Okay. And it will, this will be the case as long as x is bigger than one. And that's what we care about. X is being bigger than one. And so it's, yeah. And because we have a larger denominator. And so now we got to make sure we can integrate the one that we went out and got. So 1 over x squared, integrated from 1 to infinity. Rip out the infinity, put in a b. x to the minus 2. Antiderivative will be x to the minus 1 over minus 1, which simplifies to be minus 1 over x. Put the b in, put the 1 in. Let b go off to infinity. And this minus 1 over b term will go to 0. So the integral is convergent. The value that it's convergent to is insignificant to us. Just the fact that it's convergent. The fact that it's a 1 means nothing. So we have exactly the setup for the direct comparison theorem. We have the given function is smaller than a function we went out and got that is convergent. So the given function is smaller than a function with finite area. So the given function must also have finite area. And so therefore we say that the original integral is convergent by the direct comparison theorem. Okay, that's example one. Let's see one more example. And in this example, we have two plus e to the negative x over x. Okay, maybe it's best to write the e to the negative x as one over e to the x. So you can really see what's going on with it. You think exponentials, why would I drop off an exponential? I mean, the exponential term well, you know, definitely matter as x goes to infinity, but not when it's an e to the negative x, though. You know, when x is 10, e to the negative 10 is very small comparison to 2. And so, usually we would drop off a constant, but this time, though, the uh, e to the negative x term gets small as x gets big, so we're going to drop that term off. Okay, now that's a plus in front of that, so... The uh, original function here, compared to the function without the e to the negative x in it, must fit this inequality where a bigger numerator makes you bigger if everything else is held constant and the same. And so this time, the one we went out and got is the smaller one. We call it g. Okay. And so, so now we make sure we know what we can do, know, know what the one we went out and got does. So from 1 to infinity, we have 2 over x. That's just 2 times the natural log of x. So 2, and that's going to diverge because, you know, b is going to go off to infinity. And natural log of b is going to be infinite. So you went out and got a function who happened to diverge on the same interval. And you've shown that the function you went out and got is smaller than the given function. Your function that you were, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say your, that's pretty bad. But the given function is larger than a function with infinite area. So the given function has infinite area. I shouldn't say the word your, it seems confusing there. All right, so therefore the, uh, the given function is divergent as well by the direct comparison test. Okay, if you need to see two more examples, please um, go to my YouTube channel. If you can somehow um, be able to uh, get those uh, YouTube links in there, you can see myself working through those two examples as well. All right. My name is Nakara Rimmer. Please comment down below if you have any questions. I'm here to help. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Please like and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, take care.